Hello and welcome to this episode of Pulp Kitchen, a different episode because this week we have a guest on our show. If you're a fan of undeniably one of the biggest shows on the planet at the moment, which is Ted Lasso, then you're in for a treat because we spoke to Phil Dunster, who plays Jamie Tart in Ted Lasso. He came in to the Pulp Kitchen studios, aka my flat, and we recorded a conversation with him at the end of February. Something like that. really great. Yeah. So please enjoy this very special, yeah. different episode. Let us know what you think. We'd love to do more of these and get fun people in who were yeah. doing cool things, actors, directors, Phil was writers. great. It was a really interesting insight into what it's so like to be in a show like that, to be just a working actor in general. And of course, he was uh, kind enough to take part in some games as well. So enjoy the episode. Enjoy. I mean, I said like one of the biggest shows on the planet, not just to, to pick you up because you're here. I mean, I, I, I find it really interesting how Ted Lasso has become this, like it's the way it's permeated pop culture. And I feel like I've had lots of different experiences that just like confirm that for me. So I remember being at a bus stop in Clapham Junction, like I don't know, 18 months ago, and there was these two girls there and they were like, have you seen Ted Lasso? And then I was like, I don't, I don't know that. She was like, it, it's genuinely my favorite TV show. Wow. You know, like the classic London sort of down. Yeah. And that's how I think about it. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I went to see The Rest is Politics live with Alistair Campbell and Roy Stewart. Oh, nice. And Ted Lasso came up and Alistair Campbell said, I love Ted Lasso. That I love mad. that. I go to... The old drill sergeant himself. I yeah. know, right? <laughs> I go to uh, New York last year and I'm in Grand Central Station. There's like a Ted Lasso shrine in one shop. It's like... Funko Pops. Wow. Costumes. <laughs> inspirational quotes. <laughs> calendars. <laughs> Uh, it's it's big. I then get down to Florida to see my girlfriend's dad and, and fiance. They love it. The yeah. neighbors come over. They're like Ted Lasso. We love it. They it's just it's just everywhere. It's sort of coming out. Like, so I knew it was big because I I'm a weirdo that watches the Apple conferences for like the announcements. Oh, wow. I love tech and stuff. And uh, I remember it like all of a sudden got featured extremely prominently in yeah. the Apple TV Plus. It was like and Ted Lasso season two <laughs> is coming out. It's a huge hit. And Tim You're Cook like, is like I'm here for the iPhone. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like where's the next? I thing? love that in America they've That's got like, like shrines to it and they've got like yeah. gift shops in the UK it's like there's two people talking at a bus stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the equivalent. Yeah. I'm still that's, grateful. That's I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. It's a water cooler. Like, and it's also being mentioned stuff. in other TV shows and films. Well, the White Lotus. That's yes. so like yeah, White that was Lotus. Weird. And like, like, there are a few shows that I'd say, yeah. like Game of Thrones, Sopranos. So they where they get yeah, I was going to say <laughs> no, Game of Thrones. Not game. Game. I love a Maybe the Ted Lasso. Maybe but there's Starbucks thing there. This was like, you see Ted Lasso? No, like, there are a few shows out there that get mentioned in other comedies, other TV shows. And Ted Lasso, I'm hearing in other things yeah. like White Lotus, and I'm like, yeah, that's it's, is that, it's broken through. What's the, is that a bit mad? Are you like, are yeah. you just like that is mad? It is mad. If being the Sydney World guy and you're getting, you know, tweeted, <laughs> yeah, tweeted a little bit, bit yeah. like this is another level, right? Well, it is and it isn't because well, no, it is. It's like that's and and it obviously there's no denying that when you know I was at that point have been like knocking on doors for four six years. And just trying to make something, you know, for something to stick. When it when something like that happens, it's a really gratifying, wonderful experience. And you know, you get swept up in it, and you're like, you can't, you want to celebrate it. And it was a really nice thing to to feel like that was something that collectively we could do. But that being said, it was very much a US for the season one particularly. It was a US phenomenon. It was a very slow thing in the, the first. The first couple of weeks, people, were, I think that some people saw it and seen it and were like super into it, but still hadn't, it wasn't like a, there wasn't a huge marketing campaign around it at all. And also Apple TV Plus was a fairly new service at the time. Yeah, people yeah, were right. still, you got to like make a lot of content on a service for people to jump on. Yeah. And you need to have like a show that really grabs people. I still feel like it was very much. Yeah, it was in C its and it was Morning Show. Yes. I think yeah. which the two Morning Show shows. it opened with, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember it feeling like it was, just, it was a really high budget, but small show. Um, at the time when we when we shot the first one and then and then yeah just it's been and you know those those guys are so smart and so like intimidatingly funny mm -hmm. um, Joe Kelly Brendan Hunt and Jason Sudeikis who mm -hmm. created it and all the writers room so yeah it was um, I wanted to ask that I know we were saying that okay often at times with the, you know, COVID and the screens it might not feel real and that detachment but the Emmys I'm sure when you go to the Emmys which you have mm -hmm. and. Ted Lasso did very well at the Emmys. I'm pretty sure it feels quite real then, right? 
from from an outsider's perspective, looking at the Emmys, is that a lot of fun, or is it like a really fancy work conference? <laughs> Which is no one, no one has ever <laughs> given it that. Um, I think, I think. Ooh. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really fancy work conference, okay. which is sometimes fun. But that being said, there was like this... It was all such a mad thing to have happened anyway. Mm. And when I say mad, it's like, again, it's sort of the hysteria around it that I think was happening, particularly over in the US, and not so much here, is something that's so out of your control anyway, mm. particularly in COVID as well. It's like, it's quite hard still, really. I don't really understand like what that looks like. Um, but, and also it's not like, it's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm, we're all integral parts of it for sure, but it's not like my show. Mm. It's not like, you know, mm. I feel like I'm can be like, you know, it's not your baby. Sure. And, uh, and I think that everybody kind of feels like that. I think even really Jason just sort of was like, well, I don't know, everybody mm. sort of does his thing. I wanted to ask you like, you know, obviously you do the first series and you obviously are enjoying making it at the time, but you don't know how it's going to be received. Was it really different to come back for season two? Was the energy very different knowing that it had an audience and that people were enjoying it and it was backed? It, and then again, I guess season three even more, right? Are you still filming it or have you finished? Finished filming finished it now. Finished filming it, yeah. Uh, has, it been, has it felt different each time sort of coming back? Yes, it has. Although two was sort of still in COVID time, so... Fine. Oh, actually, no. Season one was before was pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, Those days. Those heady, heady, halcyon days. Mm. And then this was in COVID, so we had sort of quite... Well, it was... The COVID element of it was kind of amazing because we were tested every day and it was kind of safer to be in work, in a sense, than be at home. But yeah. it also meant that it probably wasn't safer, but at least you felt like you knew one way or another if you had yeah. COVID because you were getting tested every day. Um, but also it was a way to, like, actually see people. We, we had this kind of you know, um, corporation granted ability to see people. Uh, and coming back was like, I think that we all felt like, because I think for a lot of us, we hadn't really done big shows before. None, no one really, other than, you know, like Anthony Head and Jason and Brendan, and to an extent Brett, but like, no one really was like, and here we go. This is back on the old. We're all like, we get to see each other again. And also we're yeah. doing this show. And isn't it fucking mad? Well, yeah, did you hear about that? That's mad. Yeah. Oh, and I, I heard that, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's like they're on that show. Or they're going to be, you know, going on that chat show or whatever. You're like, what? Really? Yeah. That's mad. Um, That's lovely in a way. It, it is. That's so warm. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, it, and, it was a and it was a time of like, we're all going through this thing at the same time. Obviously, there were people with different ages and have been doing it for different amount of times. Yeah. But for a lot of us, it was just like you, that guy that you were working with. All of a sudden, you're like, they're getting talked about loads, and you're like, yeah, and that's your mate that you've been doing yeah. this whole thing with. So yeah, it's felt very organic, um, and sort of like kind of, kind of like innocent mm. thing to come back to and be like, guys, it's, I think it's doing really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, you like say it on a muttered voice, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think also there was an element of it, you know, the, the the very notion of the show I think is this guy who nobody really wants to want to win, nobody expects them to do well, yeah. and I think the show sort of had that. I joined the show and I was like, I think I wanted to be on that other show, mm. so even to that extent where there's this, you know, it sort of embodied that whole notion of like the underdog where yeah. nobody really expects it to do that well. And then even when we were doing it, we were like, as, as with any show, I think, or film, you're like, you don't really know how this is going to be received or how it's going to yeah. look in the end. Um, and I think that we still were sort of having that on two. And three, we were a bit more aware and like COVID had gone, uh, was, we're still getting tested on that, but it was like far more hmm. in the past. But um, What do you, um, were you about to ask? No, no, please. please. Okay. Um, <laughs> Is there a, a big misconception, just talking generally now about <coughs> working as an actor and working in the industry, like what's the biggest misconception you think your kind of lay person has about acting or your average man in the street? Is there something you often think that like, nah, it's misrepresented. Mm. Nah, no, it's not all that. You know, It's better than that or it's worse than that. Uh, interesting, interesting. Is it that much waiting around? It's a really, I think it's a really good question. And I think that first of all, it's, a job which is, I think, really 
really, really hard and taxing and at times quite undignified because you're applying for work all the time. And particularly if you're not in a job, you're constantly going to people going, you know, imagine imagine interviewing for a thing sometimes like like 50 times a year yeah. you're going in and being like Evaluated, what do you want yeah. i'll give i'll give you the thing yeah. and it does there is you know and no one's forcing you to do it hopefully but <laughs> but but still it's like it that's it's a really mentally difficult thing mm. to do and i think that the idea that it's a bit of a jolly or that you know it's it's not taxing or like you're just fucking about yeah it's not that and you know you you see brilliant brilliant people who spend years of their life you know like hard up mm. struggling and frustrated um but also i think not everybody like the idea of like this tortured artist i don't really know many actors who are like that because i think right. that you're just like you just this is just an excuse for being a dick i think <laughs> i think that you're just using this to as an excuse to sort of be this idea of being dark and mysterious i think i think actually you're just a bit of a knob and i think those people get weeded out generally anyway mm. so um i think actors they're, they're far more sort of normal probably just a bit louder they have higher decibel levels than others so. phil you are screaming right now my ears <laughs> are hurting please <laughs> and um jason tudakis obviously fronts the show and has such a like distinct comedic voice through that and he is in so many ways like a testament to that show's success and that like loving spirit that's i think why so many mm. people love the show and i think probably as well through covid like it being that yeah. positive as well but do, do you ever have you sort of worked with him now for a few years like is there much that you've like learned from him has he ever given you pieces of advice or even like moments where you've workshopped something like what's that like to work with someone like that he what he what he's incredibly good at he like he has this like beautiful mind that sometimes i think you're like i don't know what's going on there but something great's going on and you you learn that the time will come at which he'll go right, okay, and he will sit with you if you're if, you, if it's like your scene if you're, mm. you're a big scene, he will just sit with you all morning and you'll just talk about what the mm. you know what Jason was thinking with it, what the backstory maybe might be, where it's going a little bit, you know that his his ability to reference tiny tiny moments in previous scenes episodes. Mm is like Rain Man-esque where he has this like, and also with sporting references and like t like TV from the 80s references, it's he is sort of encyclopedic. Mm. And I think he just has, the thing I guess you learn from that is like, he, he doesn't talk, I think the really good actors don't really spend that much time reading acting books. I think they just, mm are really well read and versed on many different things i think that's what makes them good at imitating vast swathes of different people i just like an improv thing as well yeah. like you need to have something to say yeah. for whatever yeah. someone throws at you you kind of almost have to have an answer yeah. for anything that's that... it yeah and i think that they that the particularly the, the three of those guys um uh, joe brendan and, and jason they are so quick and that's like I haven't, I definitely haven't learned that from them. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll pick that up in 20 years. Later. Um, but um, but yeah, I think the thing he, we and we all had that at some point was the way that he was so he would sit with you. Either it would be in the trailer in the in uh, in the morning, like if you have a makeup done or whatever, he'll come over and he'll sort of be like, "So the scene, how are you feeling about that? What's any thoughts you've got?" Um, he would always be very much like. If there's a, if there's like a, oh, it says hell. Do you mind if I say, fuck? Mm. <laughs> He's like, do you, yeah, make it your own voice. Mm. Such Essentially, he just sounds like yeah. a good boss, like a good yeah. manager, yeah. like yeah, someone yeah. who's like, yeah, was aware of what you're doing, gives you personal time, Again, just like, like develop weird, something. A weird meta thing with, like how Ted is actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, life, art, yeah, mm. together. Yes. Just before we sort of naturally move on from Ted Lasso, I know you can't talk about specific plot mm. details to right. do with season three, but while we're talking about it, it's either about to come out or is mm. coming out. What could you say that a maybe little, a little taste. taste of it? Is there something that's different to the What's approach? I know I sort of asked you about coming back for season two. Yeah. Is there anything that you can like, what does it feel like to come back for season three? Is mm. it different? Anything about Jamie that you can... <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he. I think for everybody, they, you know, there are... It's quite... Ha it's handy having three season arc. We don't know if we're going to do another one. Mm. You know, nobody really knows. But it really is just start, middle and end, you know. Mm. And 
it's quite uh, particularly for Jamie's arc, where in in the sort of way that like you know you you during your twenties you get to you know learn you learn all your lessons. The thirties you start to enact them, and then the forties you enjoy mm-hmm. them. Mm. It's a similar sort of thing with the, with the three season arc a little bit where. You know he and and in and in this season we see him sort of lose himself a lot and and it's through this sort of new family that he has found you know to really use the American sort of notion of <laughs> sporting and families but um, it's through them after having sort of we see him you know dismiss his old family his dad in in season mm-hmm. two uh, we sort of see him really embrace that and fall back on that when he's got you know when he's sort of at his mm-hmm. ebb his nadir if you will. Uh, and uh, and so we, you know, that that sort of emotional like we see with Jamie, but also um, the it's got a really good ending. There's a really good ending to it where it's a good ending <laughs> <laughs> end of the season. But you um, don't know if it's the end. No, we don't. We do don't. they talk a lot about how they would sort of land the plane or sort of? Or, yeah, they do. No, no, not really. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. You nodded like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, even even up until we all received the final episode, I think that we, uh, it was like, yeah, uh, we hadn't sort of discussed it. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I can feel myself. I can feel Apple. Yeah, HQ. They're outside. Yeah, yeah. They're outside. Yeah. Um, but Behind the camera, there's like 30 men in suits <laughs> holding iPads. <laughs> but I think that is the difference between doing a film and doing a play and doing TV is that generally a film, when it's written as a screenplay, is has been done start to finish. There'll be yeah. rewrites, but you know what the you know the, the overall arc will be. And depending on what the TV show is, you'll know that. But really, you tend to get episode one, two, and three for a TV show when you start doing it because they the way that commissioning works or whatever, I don't really know. But you don't always get the whole thing. So it can be harder for some people. Some people quite like that, that we don't, you know, in life you don't know where you're going, so it's quite nice just to react within as you you'd get it each time. But, um, yeah, it's a subtle difference. And then coming out of, you know, doing three series of a comedy series, would you come out of that and go, okay, now I really want to do something similar to that and keep exploring that? Or is there a certain genre you go, actually, I'd love to be doing yeah. something in this that I want to explore? That side, like, where do you find yourself being drawn to certain roles? I just want to do, I just want to do something different. And I love Jamie Tart and I love the show. And if it was like, do you know what? You're going to do another show like that. You'd be like, well, yeah, great. That's, yeah. it's, you know, hardly a chore, is it? But, um, I would like to just do something else because mm. I think that's what, you know, that's, I think probably is what actors enjoy most is getting to explore the, re- you know, doing, mm. it's doing that lateral reading that is mm. talking about, like just exploring all that other shit. But um, yeah, and, and, and working in different ways and I'd love to do a play, mm. so much I'd love to do a play or do like a feature film where there's a lot of rehearsal time because in TV generally there's not a huge amount of rehearsal time that you get to sort of like, you know, explore and fuck about and and i think really going back to saying about drama school where it's a time for like getting stuff wrong and asking questions and dicking about generally dicking about i think is what i want to do <laughs> it would be good to get your raw reaction to the whale which you've seen like what two hours ago yeah before coming here? you walked in and said you'd seen the world we were like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up, <laughs> sit down get in front of the microphone <laughs> here's a water now talk um, uh, yeah, it's really good. It's <laughs> yeah. really good. Uh, yeah, I love I love films that are clearly plays. Mm. One of these yeah. was based off a play, wasn't it? Um, where it's it's site specific and it feels claustrophobic at times. Mm. And I think for sometimes it feels quite like um, uh, like it doesn't really explore the world very much. But I I just love that. I love yeah. that you see them go to the door and you're like, this is just a set, and I kind of fucking yeah. love that because mm. we're all. Um, and, you know, I think that I, it was funny. My friend and I um, went for a quick debrief. What was it? Sex- uh, time for a tasty debrief. Time for a tasty debrief. I was going to say sexy debrief. <laughs> time for a sexy debrief. That would be more interesting than what Johnny said. Sorry. <laughs> I would have pitched that for cinema. <laughs> um, and we were, like, looking at the allegories that there were in there of, like, um, you know, trying to find the idea of, like, kindness in the most disgusting, ugly 
person, there is kindness, there is like hope. And I think really there is, there is those things. And I think some of it is, this probably, I always think, you know, I, I, I enjoy a, a film far more when I read a review about it. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, that's what that was about. Mm, <laughs> Which yeah. you guys probably don't have because people listen to this podcast. Although I find go, it very fresh. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Like, oh, I was about to yeah, say something yeah. completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you cry at the end? I did. He I didn't. I did. I'd lump, I said lump in my throat. Yeah, I was, uh, Perry was, was, was really going. Yeah. And I was like, go for it, man. I, I said this, this the other week to George. I think there's something about, you know, Brent, the things that have happened to Brendan Fraser, I feel like he has just been waiting for this role yeah. to yeah. give this performance. And I just feel like he's very much like that character, just putting it all out there. Yeah. And it's exploded in this mm. most but incredible it's so, performance. It's so difficult, I think, looking at that. And it's those performances when you watch that and you go, and I, and not in a self depth I go, I couldn't do that. I can't, I, there's no, I don't understand how you've managed to like, the, the breathing that he's so, it's, mm. it's in a way that like, his lungs are crushed by his weight. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. And I don't know how it's like the, the way Weezing that he was moving. Well. Yeah. And I, I imagine there's some element of, you know. I think yeah. he worked with a dancer or a ballet instructor actually to oh, help really? him properly, oh, as well, well as yeah. working with weights and stuff. Yeah. Anyway. And like you can see that, but but it's, but it's more in, in, because that stuff you go, I can imagine how you've, mm. and it's so real, I, you know, I don't know how you've done it, but I, I can imagine there's a way of doing that. But with that performance when it's because there's so much that's tight because you there obviously you see quite a lot of him like this but there's so much that's up close particularly at the end the the shots are really tight mm, on his face yeah. and there's so much like perspiration and his eyes yeah. are just like and he's you can see him and it's like he's the the life is leaving his body mm. um and yet that's the most like alive that we see him is at that point in the film because he's you know he's got this like need to tell yeah. his daughter that she's amazing mm. and i think that yeah he just you're right he just ate that performance up mm. didn't he really? <laughs> oh very good yeah it's a weighty role um i don't know how many other many more of the best i mean i don't know if by the time this is out best picture the oscars would have happened yeah, probably but, yeah yeah do you, do maybe we just get you to talk about every single one like i can't believe <laughs> yeah. this one. yeah, yeah. God, it's so god that, that guy that guy again, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great that one. yeah, yeah. I'll send you an email and get you to dub in the audio. <laughs> yeah, but is there, yeah, is there anything else you've watched recently that you're just like, guys, you're pushing on people or you're just so hot on? I loved The Wonder. Oh, right. Yeah, Florence Pugh's film. I haven't was, seen that. I haven't seen that. Excellent. Excellent because it does, it's sort of like, you, you watch it and you're like, I think I know this film is a sort mm. of like Irish famine film, yeah. but it's fucking not, man. It's like mm. hopeful and beautiful and like the performances are so good and... Thanks. Yeah, and Tom Burke is is excellent oh, in one yeah, of those performances that he does where you're like, you the, on the page, this isn't that, isn't a huge role, but you mm. just do, you, there's a depth to it. And Florence Pugh is like, I mean, you don't say yeah. anything about it. She's, she's so good. On uh, did you, did you see like, Living? Tom Burke turns up in that for like, oh, really? for no, like I'd like, say 15 minutes. And it's a small role, but again, and again, it could have been a very minor thing, but he just springs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. So good. It's, yeah, he's a, he's a weighty boy. I saw Tar and I loved yeah. Tar. Yeah. I thought it was... I, the, the film itself was like, I don't know really what's going on, mm. but I just loved watching her. I think similar to what you guys said about it, you was like, yes, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, it was a, it's a very sort of oh, dark and hard to unpack. Yes. 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 Very intriguing. Yeah, that's just it. really enigmatic and powerful. Mm. But like, I'm mm. still mixed on whether or not. But I, it towed the line well because I also watched Ennis Man recently. Right. Ennis, Ennis Man. Men. Ennis Men, Men yeah, yeah. recently. I've, I've seen his first film. And that was really one of those where I'm like, I think this is really good, but I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, I <love> that. <laughs> didn't I left? Yeah. I turned, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I turned to my mate and I was like, so what was all that about? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do with Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we end every episode of Pop Kitchen with a game. We break them out into clips. It grows the show. And Monopoly. different weeks, different games. Different weeks, okay. different games. Nice. This is one of our most popular games, and it's called Strip. Cast List Countdown. Strip. <laughs> yeah. Dice. <laughs> That's all we play when the cameras come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Stay around for that. Um, this is Cast List Countdown. Yep. You have to guess the cast. No, you have to guess the film from the cast. So I'm going to okay. read out Great. the cast Great. of a film, Love starting this. Yeah. with the supporting actors for least yeah. important, okay. and I'll end with least the main star. Yeah. Okay? You've got to try and get it important. before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've got to basically <laughs> try and get it yourself. before yeah. I get to the last actor. And then don't you worry. go... Da -da 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 Boom. That's all I'm here for. And don't worry, because you can't be worse than me, because I'm rubbish at okay. it. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for your first film? Yes. Okay. You have to guess the film 
based on its cast. Ready? Mm-hmm. Mahashala Ali. Rose Byrne. Ray Liotta. Green Book. Ben Mendelsohn. Dane DeHaan. Bradley Cooper. What? <laughs> Eva Mendes. Oh. Is the Avengers? Oh. No. Ryan Gosling. That was the place beyond the pines. Oh, fuck. Hell. <laughs> Oh Good cast, God, though. Don't worry. Don't it's worry. It's a warm-up round. It's, it's a warm-up warm round. round. You've still done better than oh, me in most sick. games. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> Ready? Sick. It's fine. Uh, Next round, you've got two more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can do this. Come on, game time. Like, I want you to just put a random clip. You'd be like, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> to try and get people to watch the episode. Kenneth said, I feel sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's oh, fine. Were you, so were you it's, 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 this game is difficult because the first actor, which is the least important, you immediately have their like, entire filmography exactly, going through. Yes. So do not feel bad. This is round two. I Ready? Feel bad. Okay. okay. Phil, you have to guess the film based on its cast. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Donald Sutherland. Jamie Foxx. Colin Farrell. Kevin Spacey. Uh, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, Christ. Jason Bateman. Uh, seven Psychopaths. No. 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 Charlie Christ. Day. Oh, horrible Bosses. Yes. Hell. And then the last one is Jason Sudeikis. Oh. See what we did there? Well done. You got Wait, it. Do I get minus points for get for wrong guess? No, no. no. You can throw out as many oh, as you want. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can just keep buying them until you get them. Okay. We could have tried horrible bosses too to be really fiendish. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. kind. We were kind. Oh, just straight up horrible, horrible bosses. Yeah. But that's a really huge cast. I know it's like that's a big wild, film, yeah. but that's huge. Jamie Lawrence. You can play that cast list and then you can reshuffle yes. it. And you get a completely different film. Yes, you know? completely. What, There's also Ewan Wilford in there. He plays like the weird, uh, they think he's an assassin, but actually he's like an escort who specializes oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. piss. Who? 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 Griffith? Y- Griffith, yeah. It was Griffith. Griffith. That's how you pronounce Ewan that. Griffith? Oh. Griffith. Griffith. I think it's, it's Welsh. Gr- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> last John one. John Griffith, actually. It's not Ewan. Oh, Ewan Griffith, sorry. He's on <laughs> next week Ewan, as well. Ewan. Him and Bradley are coming on. Okay. Last one. Okay. You've got one out of two. Okay. Ready? Believe. Yes, I say the intro every time. No, I, like, see, yeah. I, see, I see how this was just made. I believe you remember. Yeah. How to play yeah. again. <laughs> okay, you have to guess the film based on its cast. Ready? Three, two, one. Victor Garber. Daniel Kaluuya. John Bernthal. Jeffrey Donovan. Josh Brolin. Benicio Del Toro. Oh, hell. Last one. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, um. Emily Blunt. Scorpio. Fucking. Sicario. Sicario. Oh. Oh, fucking <laughs> Christ. I t- I'll accept Scorpio yeah, because yeah. you had, don't, I don't believe you had it me. pictured. Burn me, burn me, burn me. Right. No, it, that's- wow. It's hot, it's, it's the torture. Well done, Phil You seen Dunster Sicario? On I have, I have, Famous and that has Sicario, of course, famously has the tensest scene of all time. Mm. The freeway. Yeah, the freeway. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and that's- You think your traffic's bad? <laughs> My God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yes, and- Lovely. I found it when I thought it was called Scorpio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the Anthony um, Horowitz. Yeah, Alex Ryder. Yeah. But, fifth book yeah. in the series. God, they never really made more of those after the one. No, they, they did. Oh, you mean, no, they made no. a whole TV they show. They made a TV show, but they never Three did seasons, like I think. a sequel to On the film. IMDb TV. Ooh. Oh, how? <laughs> Such premium oh, really? stuff. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. God. Yes. Anyway, Phil Dunstan, what a troop you Thank you, you so much for coming on and Thank for being you. a sport with the games. You can catch Ted Lasso season three on Apple TV Plus now. Phil, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. Great to hear all about it. Thank you so much. Thank you for playing the games. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Dunster. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Please let me come back and do better at the games next time. We would love to have you back. (laughs) (laughs) So there you have it. That was Phil Dunster talking there about Ted Lasso. What a lovely guest he was. So lovely. Really, really nice guy. And thank Um, you so much for listening. We will have a normal 
uh, as pr- normal programming episode of Pop Kitchen next, next week, week with more films, more fun, more reviews, more games. And if you are a fan of Ted Lasso, you'll of course know by the time that this is out, Ted Lasso season three is out now on March 15th. Uh, let us know your thoughts about that, actually. We've never really had a discussion about that on the show. So yeah. if you're a listener and you, and you have a thought either way on Ted Lasso, let us know. Or if there was anything in Phil's conversation that you want to comment on, let us know. Until then, speak uh, until next week, speak then. <laughs> See you, guys. Nice.